Hello and welcome to another Monster Hunter Rise video. This time I'll be giving you 50 tips in 10 minutes. So let's not waste any time. Let's start. Monster Hunt is not a game that rewards mindless button mashing. And if you follow this tip, you will improve your gameplay massively. Prioritize dodging or blocking over attacking. Imagine yourself with a bear in a closed room. No, not that one yet. You would naturally focus on not getting hurt and then attack only when there was an opening. Treat Monster Hunter the same way. Before picking up any weapon, find a tutorial in how to use it online. The training area is great for practicing, but you may still miss out on some important combos or mechanics. If you haven't decided on the weapon, check my top 5 beginner weapons in the banner on the top right corner of the screen. Take everything from the quest box. It's free, especially ammo. It's expensive in the early game and you might need it later. Whilst riding your Palamute, Pressing ZL makes it dash. This makes traversing the map a lot faster. However, gathering mid dash interrupts it. Next tip is gather, gather, gather. Gather everything, even shit. If you do this frequently, it will save you a lot of time later on, especially when you will craft armor and weapons. There is nothing more annoying than going back to a locale only to gather that one material that you're missing. You can recover from elemental blight by rolling. For example, fire blight wears off with 3 rolls or rolling on the water. Others like thunder blight take many rolls to wear off, so eating a nullberry is more efficient. You can use items whilst riding your palamute, so you can heal and sharpen your weapon on the go. In the shrine ruins locale, there is a shortcut you can take to get you from zone 4 to zone 8. After you mounted a monster and fought another, be on the lookout for monster materials lying on the ground. It might be the material you need for your next weapon. Remember the shit I told you to gather? You can use dung bombs to make monsters leave the area they're in. When the monster is sleeping, the first hit does twice the damage. You can use this to your advantage by using the strongest single hitting move of your weapon. If you're using a fast weapon like the Jewel Blades, you can use large barrel bombs instead. You can place two, but make sure not to move when placing the two so both can do twice the damage. You can also use your kunai to set them off. When the monster is limping and it moves to its nest, you can wait for it to fall asleep to take advantage of the previous tips. Take time learning what the endemic life can do for you. You can find this in your hunter's notes. This may sound boring. But the information you get is pretty valuable, and it can contribute to the success of your hunt. Running with your weapon sheathed and pressing B executes the Superman dive. This makes you invincible during the animation, and can save your life in the most dangerous situations. Also with the weapon sheathed you can cover good ground by using the wirebug jump, hold and dodge in sequence. For example, with 3 wirebugs you can get from zone 11 to 10 with ease in the shrine ruins. If you are using a slow weapon like the Greatsword, consider using traps and paratodes. Setting these up can give you big openings for you to attack. When a monster propels you to the air like the Arzurus' throw, you can avoid the follow-up by pressing ZL plus B mid-air. This will use a wirebug though. Not only you can restock items and change equipment, you can also change your buddies and their skills in the camp. One thing that may be missed by some, is that you can pause the game. Open the menu, go to the system tab and pause the game. If the title of the quest says hunt the monster, it does not mean you can only slay it to complete the quest. Capturing is valid too. To follow up on that, if you are struggling with a monster and you are one cart away from failing the quest, consider capturing it once it's limping or your support type palico notifies you that it's ready. You need to include traps and tranquilizers in your item loadout though. In the training area you can change the settings of the training dummy. Talk to Sekiro the trainer. For example, you can make the dummy stomp to practice counters. Don't forget to customize and use the radial menu. Having quick access to heals will save your life multiple times. If you're enjoying the video, please drop a like so I can do more of them. Also consider subscribing to the channel so you can get regular updates of when these videos are released. If you have any questions about the game, 
do consider following me on Twitch. You can ask them live and I'm more than happy to answer them. Also, I'm doing a crazy challenge that has already provided me with a recipe for disaster. Please. And let's select a Kazu. Please, Will, give me three range, uh, either one of three range weapons or the other two fire weapons. So let's spin the wheel and see what we get here. I asked for something and got like one of the worst outcomes. Oh my god, this wheel. Sometimes it may be good, sometimes it may be shit. He's almost, he's almost dead, so that's good. Yeah, I was gonna get punished there. No, no, and there you go, it happened. And with that out of the way, let's continue with the tips. Use the large monster section of the hunter's notes to find out the weak parts of their bodies, what they're resistant to, what elements are effective on them, and also the drop rates of each material. Do you want to take two palicos but don't want to lose the mobility a palamute offers? Unlock all the camps in each location so you can fast travel around the map. To make this even easier, you can assign the map to your radio menu by selecting other and detailed map. This way, you can travel even faster. When your buddies learn new skills, you need to equip them yourself. So keep an eye on the buddy board, especially when they level up. To make the selection of buddies that need training faster, in the buddy dojo adjust the criteria based on what you want and press auto select buddies. In the buddy plaza, climb the tree next to the feline chief Kogarashi. At the top, you will find the Kahoot's nest with items for collecting. After you finish each quest, don't forget to open the move around village option to see if there is anyone you need to talk to. They may give you new quest requests and also unlock new facilities. You should also check if there is a sale on the market. A good indicator is to check if the Palico Zenchi the Doctor is in front of it. Always select optional subquests before taking on a main quest. They can give you Kamura points as well as crafting materials. On that note, if you see you're only missing one or two items of a subquest to do, go out of your way to do it, so you can pick a new one the next time you go into town. In Kamura, you can climb to the top of the main building and look at the view. Now back to more serious stuff. Do you want a way of storing the items you gathered from the last quest? Have a default item loadout created, so the next time you select it, it stores the items you gathered and retrieves only the ones you specified in the loadout. If you're gunning, craft at least one of each ammo type. Equip your ranged weapon, open the item box and sort the items. This way, it's easier to pick the ammo that is available for the weapon and to create its specific loadout. On the same note, don't forget that each ranged weapon upgrade may unlock new ammo, so don't forget to update your item loadout as well. When buying from the market, always select the item box option. This sends the items directly to the box, which means you can buy in bigger quantities. If you need to equip any of the items you purchase, you can use one of the item loadouts you created. From my testing so far, playing in the lottery at the market has been worth the 500 zenny. So if you see that option, use it, as it can give you items worth more than the cost of the lottery ticket. You can access the Arcosi from your room. Talk to the housekeeper. It saves you from going all the way to the Buddy Plaza. The Arcosi also allows you to purchase items with Kamura points. Select Exchange for items to do it. When you're crafting items and you're missing out on some materials, check if you can buy them there. In the armor menus of the smithy, you can press the right analog stick to see what each skill does. Do you want to know which skills work for your weapon of choice? I have created cheat sheets for each weapon. So if you want these, check out my Twitter and grab them from there. Do you want to craft a weapon or an armor piece, but don't have the materials yet? Add them to the wishlist by pressing Y to open the sub-menu and selecting that option. Each time you gather a necessary material, you get notified. Speaking of the sub-menu, you can select the search slash sort option, and you can search armor pieces by skill. You can manage your equipment directly from the smithy 
without the need to go to your item box. This means it's easier to experiment new pieces with your existing equipment sets. Each time you craft an armor piece, you receive scraps for creating buddy armor. Consider having a look in the buddy smithy if you can craft new armor or weapons for your buddies. That leads to the next tip. Don't neglect buying and upgrading your buddy's armor. Keeping them alive keeps you alive as well. Lastly, you can use Dango tickets to get 100% chance of activating the skills from Dangos in the canteen. And that is it. Let me know in the comments below if you've learned anything from this video. If you didn't, I'm open to feedback. This can be opinions, tips, insults, it can be whatever you want. So let me know in the comments below. And this is License to Skill. Thank you very much for watching.